Hi hey boys and girls, Miss Block here. We are reading Loser by Jerry Spinelli, Chapter 26. What a kid is. Claudia. He sends his whisper out ahead of him. His whisper is his eyes, his fingertips. Claudia. He does not know it is snowing unless he turns his face up. The snowplow doesn't come here. He trips over something, sprawls face down into slow snow. He gets up, wipes his face. There's snow on his neck, melting under his collar. He takes his hands from his coat pockets for balance, the better not to fall, and falls again. He puts out his lucky stone. He clutches it in his hand. His hands are wet and cold. Claudia. Dim light ahead. The next street. The snowfall reappears. He crosses the street and back into the alleyway blackness. Claudia. He crosses another street and another. In time, he hears the static and squawk of a two-way radio. To his right, there is light through an air shaft. Glow silhouettes the rooftops. Voices. He is behind Claudia's house. He thinks to call out, you're looking in the wrong place. But he only treasures on, leaving the lights and the voices behind, sinking into the blackness. Claudia. He squeezes his lucky stone. He puts his hands in his pockets. His pockets feel the same as his hands, cold and wet. How did that happen? Squares of light to the left and right show the presence of kitchen and black bedroom windows, but they hold their light. It does not reach the alley. It is flat like yellow paper posted, pasted on black. He stumbles in hidden potholes, lurches against open gates and chain left fences, and who knows what all in the cold, pillowy night. He trudges on. He no longer bothers to lift his feet. Claudia. How long can she last? How long can a little girl stay warm, stay alive in a snowstorm at night? He will find her. How will he find her? Will she be crouched and shivering something he stumbles over? Will he hear her first, hear the little girl voice laughing and saying, I ran away, I ran away. What will he say when he finds her, he thinks? He thinks he will say, aha, that's all he can think of. Will she want to have a snowball fight before they go home? Will he say, don't be silly? Will she insist? He thinks of Polly, his sister. Polly once was as little as Claudia. Polly used to run away too. Gets it from Donald, his mother used to say. But that wasn't true. Donald didn't run away. He left the house. There's a difference. Polly ran away. When Polly got a notion, it was, Katie, bar the door, as his mother used to say. Maybe she should have said, Katie, get the leash. But there was no leash and no harness, and if the door wasn't barred, it was Polly down the steps and up the street. Whoever was closest, that was your job. Get Polly. His father used to say, Someday, I'm going to call her a bluff. I'm going to let her walk as far as she wants. Uncle Stanley said, I bet she'll walk all the way to Cleveland. And one day, Donald, if his father didn't do it, called her bluff, let her go. He stayed right behind her, Donald behind him. When she came to the street, she just walked on across it, nonstop. Look and listen for her father, his father like a mother duck, watching for cars. When she realized he was behind her, she squealed and ran faster, her little rear end bouncing like a pair of apples. She didn't make it all the way to Cleveland, but she did make it to Ludwell Avenue, which his father bragged for the next several years was at least a mile from where she started. But in the end, she stopped. Funny thing, she never slowed down. She just stopped in the middle of the street. She stopped and turned and looked at him and his father and just plopped her apples right down on the street. One car coming to a stop, another swinging around them. She had been utterly pleased with herself. I ran away, she chirped, and the sun was no match for her smile. And Zinkoff saw in the moment something that he had no words for her. He saw that a kid runs to be found and jumps to be caught. That's what being a kid is, found, caught. Then she did something that has never left him. Sitting there in the middle of the street, she reached up to him, not to his father, but to him, and his heart went out of him, and he picked her up and carried her home on his shoulders. Claudia. She isn't running anymore. He knows that now. She is waiting. The lucky stone, he cannot feel it. Did he drop it? He panics. When he comes to the next street light, he looks. The stone is still there in his hand. His hands have become like the stone, cold and hard and unfeeling. He lifts the stone and runs its smooth, icy surface along his cheek. He runs it along his lips. He puts it in his mouth, the only warm part of him left, back into the blackness. Claudia.